Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products and focus. So having a quick start at the US there, you can see there that we're just slowly grinding up that little bit higher, getting closer to 18,112, the 17,747 being potential support. And last night we saw some um, small moves in most other global equity markets. Uh, news out of China is that the Communist Party there is actually looking to revise their one-child rule, um, which has been in place for quite some time and uh, now going to be promoting uh, the two-child rule, incidentally. And what we've seen over in Asian markets, um, perhaps funnily enough, is a whole host of baby-related companies apparently have had a great uh, end to the week, and um, that's probably a lot of buzz from that side of the world. Bank of Japan did not embark on any new monetary stimulus. You'll get a chance to see uh, the Japan 225 in a second. Markets initially sold off, but then crept back up again because obviously they've still got that in their back pocket should they wish to do it at some point in the future. But the Japanese market has been quite uh, volatile in this um, end to the week. So this is where we are with the US 30. Other technicals are overbought. If you look at the RSI and the slow stochastic, they are in overbought territory, but the signal to sell has not yet been generated. Looking at the MACD histogram, though, it's kind of interesting that you begin to, to see these bars just slowly tail off. So uh, we have had such a fantastic uh, October performance-wise for the US 30. Uh, you know, we were trading around about 16,000 at the start of the uh, of the month, and now we're getting closer to 18,000. And we are now, if I just add this onto here, we are now only 2.6% uh, away from hitting an all-time high on the US 30 which is pretty impressive considering the state of the global world economy. So moving on then to the UK 100, a bit more volatility towards uh, 45.15 with the 21 period SMA potentially adding a bit of short term support. Uh, we are so close to getting a negative cross in the MACD. Obviously we had this already in the slow stochastic. The RSI is not doing a huge amount. It's relatively neutral, um, but the UK market just this, these technical candles here just don't look that great. It's up one minute, it's down the next, uh, and we're not really punching that aggressively past 64.15 to then rechallenge 65.89. I think the markets are a little bit concerned by commodity prices, the rise of the US dollar, depressing prices. And looking on my other charts, I can see gold is really moving lower. Um, West Texas is actually doing okay. It's up at 45 at the moment, uh, but everything else is looking a little bit static. So Japan 225, uh, you can see the volatility in the candle right there. It was much lower, got pushed higher. It has been higher than it is right now. It looks to be 19,104 is still going to be an important level to see if we can close above that by the end of the session. Looking at dollar yen, dollar yen quite volatile as well. Um, because of that Bank of Japan decision not to embark on any new monetary stimulus. Uh, 120 spot 55, short term potential support, longer term potential resistance 121 spot 87. So then looking at West Texas crude, you can see that we had a doji formation last night. We really want to close above 45 spot 85 if we're going to have a, a potential run closer to uh, 4940. Um, but it's just flatlining this morning. I can see it on the interday charts on my other screen. It's not really doing a huge amount this morning. Um, so and there's not really that great data. You've got CPI in the Eurozone, employment data in the Eurozone. There's nothing really that exciting today that's going to be a big catalyst to drive that forward. So from a technical trading perspective, today's probably quite good because there just isn't anything else to talk about. So gold looking at this, this is getting pretty ugly now. Uh, because of the FOMC, gold now will be feeling the pressure from a fundamentals factor uh, with a pretty bad candle there on Wednesday. We've had a, an even worse one yesterday, uh, and now we're kind of floating in between two ranges. But it'll be 1138 is the potential support level. Also coincides with that 55 period SMA as well. So uh, 1157 will be a potential resistance. Should we get any retracement, that could be a strategic level for traders to look at. So finishing up with the Euro dollar and GBP USD. So Euro dollar, uh, it managed to recover a little bit yesterday, maybe a bit of a dead cap bounce considering the fundamental factors. So one spot 11 would be the potential resistance, uh, but we're already in negative territory on the Euro. It slowly grinded up last night, but that's, it has come off a couple of hundred points up into this area. So one spot 0786 is a potential support and the fundamentals are uh, probably adding weight to that move. 
Finishing up with GBP USD, it's also tried to rally yesterday, bullish engulfing patterns. So that's kind of interesting. We've managed to push up higher this morning, capped potentially by these dual moving averages, with one spot 54.24 being the next potential resistance as US GDP can disappointed yesterday. It's given a bit of a relief rally uh, on US denominated FX pairs. So that kind of gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. Let's just check the calendar over the weekend. Uh, there is some Chinese data. I always like to check on Saturday and Sunday now because there is so many bits of Chinese data that comes out over the weekend. You don't want to miss that. Uh, Sunday does bring you the PMI data, so don't forget that one. And then Monday, we've got more PMI from China. You've got the Housing Index, UK. Yeah, PM, loads of PMI data for market serve in Germany, the Eurozone, the UK, and the US. So uh, that should be kind of interesting. And then on Tuesday, uh, not really a huge amount to be fair. So chart forum, keep your keep your eyes on this, guys. Jasper has been doing lots of cool analysis on major FX pairs right there. So make sure you get a chance to view that. Make insights part of your layout going forward, and join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.